Hello, Moto America fans, and welcome to this latest edition of Off Track with Carruthers and Vice. I am Carruthers. <laughs> no, you're not. Okay. All right. I'm Vice. He's Carruthers. I couldn't fake any of you guys out. I mean, you never see us, so you might kind of think maybe I, I could change it up, but I guess not. So, all right. I'll be Vice. He's Carruthers. But I do know the guy in the center is our newly crowned 2021 Hono Superbike champion, Mr. Jacob Gagne. Jake, thanks Jacob. for being on. <laughs> Got that right, Sean. <laughs> wow. You nailed it. I remember back in the old days, you were at one time Jacob. No, you were Well, I was no. born Jacob. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I don't think anybody's called me that in a long time. But now that you're a champion, I have to treat you with even more respect, all you right. know? <laughs> It doesn't bother me. That's all right. Okay. That's all right. So we got we got Jake on here. And, you know, Jake's still the same Jake he was before he went nuts and won all these races this year. And we need to ask Jake about this because, Jake, it doesn't seem like before this season you hadn't won a Superbike race because you won St Super Stock 1000. You won a lot of big bike, bike races. I remember you dicing it up in Daytona Sport Bike with, with Cameron a bunch of times. So it's, like, hard to believe that it – at this point in your career, you start in that second race of this season. Here's a win, and you've been on this roll like this. Does it seem weird to you? It's 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 a little different, you know. It's hard. <laughs> it was hard to believe. If you would have said that going into the year that we won every one but one, it, uh, that would have been a shocker, you know. But I mean, it, in hindsight, you know, we came in every weekend ready to go with an amazing bike, and uh, you know, every weekend I I know I've had the bike to win, so I go out there with the mentality that's. It's my job to go put it up there, you know? And, uh, but yeah, it's been a crazy year. We've had a lot of great races. I've got a lot of, a lot of wins, led a lot of laps. And, um, it's just, it's crazy. I kind of put it behind me and I look forward to the next one each and every time. And, um, but yeah, in hindsight, it is, it's kind of crazy. But. Yeah. And I mean, you know, everybody in the paddock likes you and I certainly, everybody in the, in the Hono Superbike field likes you a lot. I mean, Matthew Skoltz, he, he loves you. But the fact, he, I mean, not in that way. He's married. Everything's all good there. But and he's got and Jake actually has a girlfriend. We'll talk about this later. But anyway, the thing about Jake is he's a he's a well liked guy. And Matthew, hey, Sean. Matthew do, doesn't get upset about it. But the fact that last year he's like, if it wasn't for Cameron Bobier, I might win a couple of these races. And we thought going into the season, levelest playing field we've ever had. You know, oh, it's I honestly, totally... I thought there'd be like five or six guys winning two races each. Yeah, yeah. and you know, no and doubt. I just and. I just didn't see it coming. Thanks, man. None of us. <laughs> it's so funny because almost every time we go to the press conference on the way up there, he apologizes to me for, <laughs> for ruining another, ruining another race. But I always say that's oh, okay. <laughs> but but seriously, did you you know last? What did you think approaching going into the season? I mean, I know you you ride the bike hard. You you know what happens happens. I understand you've got that feeling, but it's just. You know, did you think it was going to be harder or has it been really hard? Oh, it's been, I mean, it, it's, it's been tough, of course, you know, but again, like you said, I just go out there and ride as hard as I can every single lap from, from every single race. Um, but like you guys said, I mean, I, there's, there's so many guys going into this year, even at the Coda test, you know, we did our talks, our interviews about it. And there was a lot of guys that could win every single weekend. Um, but we just been fortunate, you know, the bike's been, like I keep saying, the bike's been super dialed in. We have such a great crew, great team, great everything's just gelling and when things are gelling you just you don't want it to stop and it hasn't stopped quite yet so uh i'm just kind of riding that wave and um but like i said this this yamaha has been amazing to ride i made a lot of improvements on a lot of different sides of things with my riding with the bike with the crew and then finally when things start coming together um yeah it's amazing but you know and it's kind of crazy we did have one dnf to start off the year uh but other than that the bike's been flawless you know and that even that just that just shows you what an amazing crew we got. Um, every single person, every single part that, that comes together to put that motorcycle out there, everything's just gelling. And so I'm just thankful that I got such a great crew. Um, and yeah, I just want to keep keep on doing it. We only got one more round here and uh, it's pretty wet outside. Looks like we got a nice wet weekend, so that'll definitely switch it up. I'm sure everybody's uh, everybody's excited for that, and including me. I'm excited to get out there in the rain. We haven't had rain races in a long time. The, with the Moto America rain curse from long ago is kind of in the opposite. So, uh, but somebody brought it back this week. So. It's funny too, when you mentioned the rain, cause it doesn't seem like that long ago we were sitting here and we we're thinking, man, it's raining. You know, I, 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 I would think Jake Gagne might be able to win one of these yeah. things finally, cause it's raining and you almost did. You, you made it to about there on the last lap, right? Yeah. That's what we were just talking about. That was, you know, Skoltz was out front. I was chasing him down. That was, uh, 
I can't remember, was that 2017 or so? Yeah, it's been 17. a while. Yep. Yeah, and I threw it away in the, in the last lap, turn two. I'm sure uh, all the guys were, were a little bummed about that one, but um, I had to give it my all, you know. And uh, like I said, all, a lot of these boys can really ride in the rain, and it'll uh, – it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a little different, you know, going into every weekend. Um, it's been, the weather's looked killer, you know? And so it kind of, it takes away a lot of those little variables, but this year, this, this weekend, we got lots of little variables running around to mess with us. So, um, but I'm excited, you know, luckily I think everybody feels, especially the team, a lot less pressure now that we wrapped up that championship. So we're just going to go out there. It's not even really cut loose. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to cut it loose. Just go, just go for it. Try to win some more races and same thing for everybody else. So. Yeah, I mean, so that's the thing. I was talking to Matthew about this and, you know, he's locked up second place in the championship. So he, he almost has nothing to lose either. So he's he's going to send it, as you guys like to yeah. say. Are you going to send it? I mean, what's what's your you young boy? Do you have a different mentality this weekend or no, is it the same? It's the same. I mean, and it's I've been, been sending it all year. I send it every lap, every race all year long, you know, and uh, like I said, the bike's in a good spot. It feels good. So I'm in a comfortable spot where I can send it and. Uh, I can get away with little things and I can, uh, you know, keep on trucking along, but yeah, every, everybody's going to be sending it. It's the last race of the year. We've got three races. Um, and I know everybody wants to win just as bad as I do. So it's going to be fun. When we left, when you left Coda, the test, I, like I, I, I thought you were a little bit different at Coda. It's almost like you realize like, Oh man, like this is going to work out pretty well. <laughs> Did you leave there thinking, I think we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I left there, you know, even in preseason testing before Coda, um, just, you know, we only tested button wheel out in California and compared to the previous year, we made a lot of progress. And, you know, my lap times, my consistency from last year to this year in preseason testing came a long, long way. Uh, so I was already fired up going into Coda. And then at Coda, we had a lot of good testing there. We went fast. We focused on on doing our job and making sure we could kind of consistently do that pace focused on a lot of race pace stuff. And, um, so that being said, like it's, it's all, it's all just kind of worked out, you know? And, uh, but at Coda, you know, I still, I knew there's a lot of guys, anybody can surprise you any weekend, you know, anybody can be there. And, uh, I've just been a little bit, just had that little bit of a cushion on, on pace and that's made my life a little bit easier to avoid any drama in the races. I've been, fortunately I've been getting good starts. My starts last year were pretty bad. And uh, I messed up some of my races because of my bad starts, but I figured that kind of figured that out. So, um, yeah, we'll see what we can do this weekend. A lot of people don't in racing, not in racing, but the people outside of racing looking in, they don't really understand the importance of a crew. Uh -huh. Like they think you can just, you know, the rider is the rider and he can make up for anything. But I think, you know, more than anybody at this point, like the crew is so important and especially that crew chief. And you've really got a good one now. And I think you guys have a good relationship. I'm talking about John Cornwell. Yeah. And that's made a big difference too, right? It's made a huge difference. I mean, I, uh, you know, I had a, I had got to work with John a little bit last year with Olin's. He came over to help us out whenever he could. And he always helped us really understand and make great progress. And so, uh, again, like every, but everybody on that whole team is all really, really working, get, working well together. Everybody's doing their job. Like I said, with, with Mike, with Walker, with Darren on the electronics, with, with Richard doing what he does and, and Corndog as well. Everybody's just doing their job. And it's like the further along that we get in this year, the more wins we rack up, everybody's like making sure, all right, let's make sure we got all our ducks in the line and make sure we have everything dialed in because anything can happen. It's motorcycle racing. Um, but like you said, you know, some people, I guess from the outside, you wonder what it takes to put all that together. And it takes a lot, you know, these super bikes, they got a lot of cool stuff on them. They got a lot of, you can make a bunch of little tweaks and it makes a really big difference. And when everything's in that zone, that it's going to work well at every track. You know, I, I knew even in the beginning of the year, we could bring the spike anywhere and it would be rock solid, you know, just little adjustments here, little adjustments there. And um, that's a good feeling. I have a question. <clears throat> do you, do you rule the roost in that truck? Like no matter who they keep bringing in, do you make sure you're the man in the front there and like your clothes are where they want to be and you own the most covered space and all that? No. Come I on. Got, I, <laughs> I, got, I, got my, I got my side of the, of the little rig up there. Josh has got his side. We, oh. you know, we got plenty of room. And where, not... where were you squeezing the little Tony stuff? <laughs> it only they, a little they, they put them up top where they load the bikes. <laughs> Did they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Well, well, Tony was cool with it. He was all right with it. You know, that guy. Tony's easy. And He's Josh, easy, too. Right? They're all easy going. They're all, they're all good guys. And uh, 
But yeah, it, you know, it's it was, it was funny. We're getting dressed and we see Tony up there crouching. Down. Well, he didn't have to crouch down as much, but still up there getting his dress, getting dressed and everything. But it, it works out well, you know, even, you know, my, Josh and I and Tony for those weekends, we all getting ready to go, getting getting dressed up, suited up side by side, but it doesn't change anything. I We're all in our zone feeling, you know, focus on what we got to focus on. And you don't have Cameron's smelly socks. Right. Oh, yeah. His foot spray is still in there. I, nobody needs it, though. <laughs> nobody wants to touch it. <laughs> what, what was it like to have three guys on the team? Did you like it? And what was it like to add Tony? Was it make, did it make it more hectic? Did you feel like it's just another Yamaha out there? I mean, did he, and did he, he likes to tweak things. He, I know he was talking to Richard a lot. Did he ever try to impart any wisdom on you or did you try to help him? I mean, tell no, us about it. He, uh, Tony's a great guy. And like I said, I've known him a little over the years, but even this year, those couple races we got together, uh, we got to hang out and talk more than we ever really had. And I've always loved Tony. I've always uh, respected him for what he's done over his career. Um, and, but we, we've had a good time together and, uh, but everybody kind of does, you know, they all still kind of do their own thing and having three riders on the team was awesome. I was stoked. Um, uh, it's another Yamaha up there to do work and another attack Yamaha, especially those, those boys are going good. And, um, but it didn't really change, didn't really change our program. You know, we're, I guess, you know, we're thinking forward. I'm thinking about what I got to do in practice and qualifying in the races and whatever goes on, hopefully behind me. I don't, I don't stress about it. You know, one of the things interesting about you is is your your talent and penchant with motocross and the fact that you still train with it and the fact that you qualified and raced in an outdoor AMA motocross at, at Salt Lake City at Utah. Um, so you've got that in you. And I think in the past, from what I understand it, you have tended to use the rear brake, maybe to excess sometimes. You still doing that this year? Yeah, if that's been one thing that we're working on. We're always working on is, uh, may, you know, of course, I'm going to use the rear brake, but there's spots where I don't need to use it. You know what I mean? In the past, I've been used to maybe using it to help with the wheelie or using it on the exit turns and places. It's always, I think with most people, you can look at their data if, if they're kind of a rear brake guy and you can tell where they're a little uncomfortable and where there's a little bit of uncomfortable feeling. You know, me and I think a lot of guys naturally will just, give the rear brake a little squeeze, try to bring the bike back to you. Um, but the more I dial my ride again, the more we dial the bike in, the less and less I need to use it. But you know, we're still, every weekend we're still looking at, okay, hey, do you really need to use it here? Do you really need to use it there? Um, Cause you know, these bikes, they got fantastic electronics. Why don't they just take it off? In case I send it <laughs> off in the grass, I still want that thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they work well in the grass. They do work well in the grass. So. You know, one of the things I remember from last year is at Ridge, and it was that one start where it was like, what? You were you were spinning the rear tire. So, I mean, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it. Jim, no, I, I'm just trying to ask you, like, what happened? And what are you not doing now that... Well, last year I was, and I guess with my motocross background, like I'd always, you know, when the light goes on, I give it a, you know, get find the, the spot in the clutch so it's ready to go. But I was always having a finger or two on the front brake, you know, so you just to keep from creeping. And uh, that was at Pittsburgh. I was at Pittsburgh. I remember because I think it was after the race. Kyle, I think it was Kyle Wyman behind me. He's like, "Dude, I saw, oh, it was Pittsburgh, I saw yes. you lighting that thing up. There was smoke coming off the tire. You messed up my whole start, my yeah, whole program." It was but that was the thing. I was using the front brake to kind of make sure I didn't creep, you know. And this year, you know, these guys are on me. Don't I don't want to see a finger on that front brake on the start. I'm like, all right, I get it, I get it. And so I've changed a couple of those little things. And um, so, but that that's like kind of why that why that caused issues. And then I'd kind of, you know, if you have the front brake on and I'm trying to go, I, I could be, even when I'm in a, still at a complete stop, I could still be kind of getting the clutch hot, smoking it a little bit. And that's why I had issues uh, with roasting some clutches last year, which was completely on me. And so I had to figure that one out. Hmm. So, what, so what happens? Like you get off the start and then the, you can't, the clutch, you can't, it grabs? What, what's wrong well, with the clutch at that point? Like last year, <laughs> it gets hot. Yeah, it just gets really hot and then it starts, it, it starts slipping, you know, okay. it starts slipping. Even that happened at, I think I had my last, I learned my last lesson even at Road of Road Atlanta this year. I think it was the, the second race, the race that I won. I was so, I was on the third row because of the weird rule that they send you to the back, punish you for doing bad in the first don't race. Don't look at me. I don't make it. I'm not looking at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I, but even at the first race or the second race in Atlanta, after we DNF'd, I was fired up. I wanted to win that thing and I was on the third row. So I kind of did the same I kind of slipped the clutch a lot more rather than just letting it out and keeping the RPMs a little lower. I just had to think scream and trying to get out of the hole. 
um, and a couple, even two, three laps in, you start to, you, if you start to feel the revs, it starts, the clutch starts slipping a little bit. So I had to, I had to adjust. Luckily I knew which way to adjust the clutch to get some free play back in it. Cause it loses some of that free play and binds up. And so, um, luckily I figured that one out and the clutch kind of came back to me, but that was ever since then, I'm, I feel I, like I said, I've worked on my starts. I figured out how to get the thing out good and safe and fast. And that was kind of the key for this year. For yeah. Sure. It's like a night and day difference. Your starts have been amazing. Do you think, I mean, it's a lot of stuff, but do you think that's been a pretty big factor in you, what you've done this year? Totally. Uh, okay. You know, I mean, and that's kind of been my, my game this year, you know, if I know I have the pace, so I want to go out there and get a good start. And if I could lead from first turn, that's that's the ideal situation for me. You know, I don't have problems going out and doing my laps by myself. I prefer a little a clear track, and if the guys want to come with me, try to hang on. That's 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 what they're gonna do. And uh, but for sure, I've luckily I've gotten off to a lot of great starts. It's kind of helped me avoid drama, helped me avoid you know getting in in the show that's going on behind me, and I can focus on doing my laps and trying to just get out of there. I think the fact they all know that you're beating them in the first two laps. I think it causes them a little bit of angst. Yeah. And you can tell everybody's yeah. rushing everything in the first two laps because they like, if he gets away, we're done. Yeah. And then that's when you're seeing a bunch of, you know, everybody trying to, you know, they're getting in each other's way yeah. and then you get away anyway. But yeah, that totally. seems to be what happens. And that's, you know, that's what I, that's what I wanted to avoid getting off to good starts. I mean, everybody knows, you know, I can get, it could be on pole position, but when you got a clear track and out there in first place, if I do something, it's on me at least. Like I only got myself to blame. But right. If I got, if I got a bunch of guys running up in the inside of me, and uh, that's just the situation. That's that's the pack. You know, that's racing. That's there's right. nothing wrong with that. That's racing. And but if I could avoid it, by all means, I'm gonna try to avoid it. Do you miss it a little bit? Like do you do you, do you, does it do you miss like the fact that you're out there by yourself and you're? I mean, I know you're ripping off fast laps. So you're pr plenty busy. Yeah. But do you miss like a little bit of combat? Not really, I, I'm, not, I'm not here for combat. I'm here to try to win, try to win races, go as fast as I can. Of course, we That's all love enough. we all love a good battle, and uh, like I like we always talk about after the race, like maybe it's not the most exciting thing to get out there and try to pull a little gap, but that's that's my job. Right, that's my job to go out there and try to win races and uh, to avoid anything that's going to make it tougher or harder. So, well, you know that rule you were talking about where you'd start, but like, yeah that we're doing that to you this week. <laughs> All right. There's really no cause for it, but we'll come up with one. But Sean was in charge of that part. And oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm He's all about that. Yeah. You're still here, Sean. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> hey, so I want to ask you, this is something I always remember that Ben Bostrom said, said, and he said it to a few people, but you <laughs> formerly raced in World Superbike. So one of the things Ben said when he went from AMA racing to World Superbike is he, he said, man, I learned really quickly that you have to be – on and you have to, from the word go, you have to be as fast as possible. And it seems like that's your mentality now. I mean, you want to lead all the time. You don't want to get in any dices. You just want to get up there and go crazy. Is that something you had from World Superbike or have you just always raced that way? I think it's, well, it's something I've learned over all the years. And then World Superbike, obviously, um, I remember going and I, we'd go out in first practice and you go out and you see three laps into first practice, you see Johnny Ray already down to the freaking lap record pace. And you're like, okay, well, this guy, <laughs> he's going out with a plan. He's going out knowing what he wants to do. He's not screwing around. He's just going out to try to go fast and, and get that head start on everybody. And so that's kind of, you I you know, I learned that over the years, you know, even in the past, it's like when I, when I first started road racing in rookies cup, there was no, there's no, there's almost no way you're going to get out and, and pull right. a lead. It's like, sometimes you are just, all right, I'm going to chill here. We got 10 laps to go. I'm going to relax. I'm going to see what this guy's doing. I'm going to see what this guy's doing. I'm going to see what, where I can, where I can make that progress on the last lap. But, uh, things, you know, things change on bigger and bigger bikes, especially super bikes. You know, it's like I said, I'm going to try to avoid, avoid any of that drama if I can. And, and to me, it's fun. I, I enjoy going out there and doing my laps and ride, you know, it's not, it's not a cakewalk just because I'm out there and I have a second lead or two second lead doesn't mean I'm, I'm cruising around. I'm still going, you know, right. and of course, um, I'm always keeping an eye on my pit board. And if, we got to turn the, we got to turn up a notch, drop the lap times. I'm always ready to do that too. So it's kind of, it's, it's like it's motorcycle chess or something. I don't play chess, but <laughs> I know you're not big on looking back or looking forward. No. You like to live in the moment. Yeah. So well, this, I don't this question is going to piss back. you off a little bit, but do you, based on your success you're having now, yeah. is it hard for you to not wish that this was three years ago? Yeah. Because your whole world could be different. 
you know, you could be, if this was three years ago, next year, you're going to Europe. Yeah. It, again, I don't, I don't think, I don't waste my, my brain power thinking about that stuff. God, I you waste know, too much if, of my, what, <laughs> if, what if, what if, what if, what if. Well, no. you know, and I, and I told you before we started this, I told these guys, I was going to ask a couple of dumb questions. So get ready. Here's a dumb question. It relates a little bit to this. I know you don't look back, but I've been thinking the guy, the Jake Gagne that we have this year, if, if you were the Jake Gagne this year that last put yourself last year against Cameron, would Cameron have won so many races? What can you, you can't even imagine <laughs> I, it, right? I don't know. You know yeah. what I mean? And of course, if, you know, we could look at lap times and look at this and that, but it, I, you know, if I had a way, second year against Cam on the bike, I'm sure it'd be, I'm sure it would definitely be closer than it was last year. We all got smoked last year. I got right. smoked by him every, every race, every session. So. And by the way, uh, Jake has track records at five tracks this year. He's broken the track record at five going into this weekend. And I mean, the weather's a little funny, so we don't know what's going to happen here, but, but it's possible you could do it again. So you have gone faster than Cameron did last year. Of course, if Cameron was back, I, I don't know. I know it's all speculation. I can't even fit it in my, in my head what that would be like. And that question about World Superbike, I was the same way. I was like, you know, so then here's dumb question number two of maybe some more. Um, <laughs> no, you don't have time for any more. You, you're not about to sit here and announce anything. I get that. But I want to, do you, what are you doing next year? I don't know. I'm focused on, I got a couple more races here this weekend. That's all I'm thinking about. Um, yeah. And there was like, people are talking, people send me texts. I don't go on the, the internet and all that. I don't read all the <laughs> stuff, but people send me stuff like with, you know, with this and that from Europe. Oh, nobody's nobody's talked to me. Nobody said anything to me. And I, you know, I don't, I think, I hope to be back here on this Yamaha race and Motor America Superbike. And I mean, of course I'm open to anything. And if there's a good opportunity, uh, a great opportunity on a motorcycle that I'd love to ride and a team that I'd love to be on, then I'm open to anything. But um, I'm fortunate that I get to ride a motorcycle, the best motorcycle I've ever had. Um, I'm having more fun racing motorcycles than I ever had. I got a great crew and it's, you know, it's, it'd be hard to, to leave that unless, you know, of course I'm, I'm always ready for more if the opportunity comes, but it's gotta kind of be it's something be good. Right but like you said, it's just all, all speculation. And I don't, I, I don't have enough brain power for speculation. Yeah. Yeah, and this is this is another along that I, I'm not saying you, I'm not agreeing with you. you. I don't have the brain power to even answer that properly or respond. But so this is weird too. But like uh, I keep thinking about you kind of you kind of are a Yamaha rider. You re, you rode a Yamaha and Daytona sport bike. You won a Super Stock 1000 on an R1, and this R1 is night and day different than that one. Very similar. I mean, is it? Can you even remember to compare it? Uh, you know, obviously there is, diff that was a, that was super stock. So there's things that we couldn't have. There was less electronics. There was some, you know, swing arm and just little, little things, you know, of course. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to say. I, you know, and I, I've never went back and looked at lap times or compared, right. but it's, it's an R1. And I, for me, this R1 super bike has been the best super bike I've ever ridden. And like you said, I've had great, I think Yamaha is the only thing I've actually won races on. You know, besides like in the in the rookie scuff days back right. in the day, um, but Yamaha's been good to me. Um, they've you know they've always they've always had my back, and even on all the road race factory days, we got great support. Um, Keith McCarty and, and Tom Halverson and, and Jim Roach and all the guys have always had a great relationship, and um, I was stoked that they that they brought me on board last year, um, and that kind of helped me bring a new a new wave in. You know. We're waving. He's waving over there. We're running out of time. time. See, you don't have anything more dumb. You don't special. have any questions. You only asked me like one question. Did this I only do one? Sean, always, this is the guy. Man. I always ask. Let's get him a TV show. <laughs> I ask all, oh, too many. I just go. Crazy. I had a good one to end with. Oh, here's a good one. So today we announced that Moto America is going to be doing the Daytona 200. Let's say you're back. You, you sign another deal. You come back with Richard's team to do Superbike. If he built you a badass R6, would you do the Daytona 200? Yeah, I'm open to I'm open to anything. You know, I don't. I I'm gonna keep answer. saying that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, all right. Yeah, I thought you know it's. A, I'm glad Moto America brought the 200 back. I'm glad the baggers are going there. You know, it's Bike Week, right? It's. I think that's going to be a killer situation. And um, but if if Richard lines me up with an R6, we'll, I'm sure we'll be out there if those boys want me out there. So works for me. I'll race. Yeah, I'll race anyway. All right, we'll wrap it up here. So listen, this is the final round of the, the 2021 season. He's wrapped it up. He's happy as can be. He's going to send it, he tells us. Uh, you know, 
we're going to have some interesting weather, which is worth coming and seeing. We hope to see everybody lining those trees out there. And we've got three super bike races this weekend to watch this guy go crazy. So uh, come and watch us. We've got, we've got Mini Cup by Motul. They've got an awesome setup over on the side on a, one of the proving areas. It's like a skid pad that they've got the, the road course put up on. We've got Build Train Race with seven women who have uh, custom built their bikes and have been training and racing. Um, so what about those guys that ride in those big cages? Oh, we got the ball of steel, steel studs. I was watching yeah. those guys at VIR, and I was scared. I was I was scary watching. Yeah, because there's two of them. It's like how do they? Gnarly. So yeah. Gnarly. So you won't do it? No, okay. not a chance. We're gonna look into doing so we have that. And the mini too. cup. I love watching those kids, man. It's so fun watching those kids. They are, they go so fast on those bikes. You would like that, those? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll be lining the fence over there. Imagine how good you'd be there. if you had those. You'd win some races this year. <laughs> I just got to hope those kids don't grow up too fast and start racing me. There you go. Oh, one other quick thing about, about Jake. So Jake's won 16 races this year. Uh, we have three more. And Jake is currently tied with Josh Hayes and with Cameron Bobier, his former teammate, for most superbike wins in a single season. If he wins one or all three of the races this weekend, he breaks the record. He has a chance to leave this season with 19 victories in a That's single insane. season. 19 out of 20. Incredible. So we'll leave you with that deep thought for you guys. So thanks for joining us. Don't think too hard. <laughs>